Sarah is six years old. She's been hearing a lot about people getting sick from something called a coronavirus. They say it is an epidemic, which means that a lot of people are getting sick and the disease is spreading from person to person. It is all over the news on TV and her mom and dad talk about it. Sarah's school is closed. She can no longer play soccer or play with her friends. She's been told that she must stay more than six feet away from her grandparents and friends. She is worried that her family and friends will get sick, and she's also afraid that she will get sick. One night, when her mom is tucking her into bed, she asks, Will you and Dad get sick? I'm afraid, afraid you'll get really sick. Will I ever be able to go back to school and to see my friends? Her mom calms her and tells her that they will be safe because they have knowledge that will help protect them from getting an infection. They know how the sickness spreads from someone who has the infection, so they know how to prevent it from spreading to them. Her mom hugs her and asks her what questions she has. What causes it? How is it spreading? How does it make people sick? Her mom gives brief answers to her questions and tells her not to worry because they are using their knowledge to keep them all safe. Sarah is somewhat reassured, but she is still concerned and she wants the virus to go away. After her mom leaves, she falls into a very deep, sound sleep. Sarah begins having a dream. There is a kindly old man in her room. He is wearing a dark blue robe and a funny peaked hat resembling a witch's hat and he is holding an oddly beautiful staff with a carving of an owl's face at the top. Despite her surprise, she is not afraid. He has a peaceful, kind face, and he is smiling at her. Hello, Sarah. Don't be afraid. My name is Leot Rewap, but you can call me Larry. I am a wizard, and I have come to bring you a gift. What is the gift? The gift is knowledge. Your mom gave you some, and I want to give you more to keep you safe. If you are willing, I will take you on two magical trips. One to show you what happens when someone gets the coronavirus, and another to show you how it spreads. Yes, I want to know. The wizard points his staff at the window and shouts, Open! And the window opens, letting in a warm, gentle breeze. Okay, let's go. All you have to do is watch and listen and keep your mind open. The wizard mutters a spell. Micro me, micro you, micro micro, show her the infection in one. Sarah and the wizard start shrinking. They shrink more and more and more until they become microscopically small. This is how they would look if they were under a very powerful microscope. That round thing with the red spikes sticking out of it is one of the evil coronaviruses. Sarah and the wizard are suddenly in a dark cave with strange pink walls. She can see light at one end, and she can hear children's voices. The walls of the cave are wet and a little bit sticky. Air is rushing back and forth around her. Where are we? We are inside the nose of your classmate Tommy. Oh, gross. Shh, pay attention. Sarah hears a loud sneeze from outside. Watch out, duck! <coughs> Sarah ducks, just as a shower of mist enters Tommy's nose from the outside. She can see droplets of water and viruses from the sneeze. They are coronaviruses with ugly red balls on the outside. What just happened? Tommy's friend Jeremy has a corona infection. He sneezed and didn't cover his mouth and nose, so he blew out a cloud of germs including those coronaviruses. Tommy was standing about three feet away, and he breathed in some of the spray with the viruses. His friend's name is Jeremy? No, it's Jeremy, but Jeremy is very germy right now. When he coughs or sneezes, he sprays out a lot of virus germs. Sarah notices that the viruses are sinking into the nose cells and disappearing from view. What's happening to the coronaviruses? Are they being destroyed? Sadly, that is not the case. They are entering the cells lining the nose. Let's go inside one of those nose cells to see what's going on. 
The wizard points his staff at a nose cell and says, Liposoma entrada. Sarah and the wizard quickly enter the cell. Sarah and Larry are now inside the cell, and it is quite magnificent. There are many inside walls and all kinds of things moving around and doing things. Wow, this is really incredible. I thought cells were just round blobs, but there's a lot going on in here. I can't believe all the stuff that's in here and all of the activity. Yes, there is a great deal going on here, but let's look at what the coronaviruses are doing. Sarah sees a virus enter the cell. Its outer coat dissolves, revealing a large red molecule that looks like a fancy ribbon. Larry explains that the red ribbon is the genetic code of the virus. The virus code attaches to some of the cell's internal parts and begins to produce new copies of the virus. Soon, there are lots of additional viruses next to the outside wall of the cell. All of a sudden, there is an explosion and the cell bursts, sending Sarah and the wizard and the hundreds of new virus particles flying. What happened? The virus made hundreds of copies of itself and the cell exploded, releasing the new viruses and the cell parts where they will cause aches and pains and fever. The new viruses will now spread to other cells. If this keeps up, the infection could reach his lungs and cause trouble breathing. Isn't there any way to fight the viruses? To stop them? Well, Tommy's body has a lot of defenses against attacks like this. This is an attack, you know and there will be a very big battle. The body's defenses usually win the battle and defeat the viruses, but unfortunately this isn't always the case. Let's go see how the battle is going. Sarah and the wizard travel around Tommy's body and find that many of the cells in his nose and throat are infected, causing him to cough and sneeze. His lungs are being invaded, and he is coughing more and is short of breath. He now has a fever, and he has a lot of aches and pains. This is terrible. What if Tommy doesn't get better? What's going to happen? Isn't there any way to fight the viruses to stop them? Wait, I think Tommy's defenses are growing. Let's go check out his bloodstream. We're inside one of his blood vessels. The round cells are red blood cells. I can see some viruses over there, and I think I see some of Tommy's antibodies coming to fight the viruses. The blue things are antibodies made by Tommy's defense cells. They grab the viruses and tie them up until a defense cell can gobble them up. They had a late start, but they are catching up. There are thousands of coronaviruses inside Tommy, so it will take a few days for the antibodies and the defense cells to get rid of them. In the meantime, some of the viruses get shot out into the air whenever Tommy sneezes or coughs. Here come some defense cells to gobble up the viruses. The antibodies and defense cells are starting to get the infection under control. In a few days, he will feel much better. Tommy's defenses will win this battle, and he will not only be cured, but he will be immune for a while. That means that the viruses will not be able to infect him for a long time, because the defenses will be ready and waiting. I think we've seen enough here, but there is more to see. Let's see how it spreads. Hang on. Sarah and the wizard spin around and seem to be zooming through space. Suddenly, they are silently floating above a classroom. Can you see them? They are magically invisible to the children in the room. The boy in the middle has a mild infection. He sneezes, emitting a spray of germs that linger in the air for a while before it slowly drifts downward to the desks and papers and hands of his classmates. Some of the viruses are breathed in by students sitting close to him those students will get infected. When somebody who has the infection sneezes or coughs, they create a spray of germs that can shoot out about six feet. <laughs> but if you are more than six feet away from an infected person who sneezes or coughs, you probably will not get it. This is called social distancing. <laughs> Next, Sarah and the wizard are hovering over some boys playing basketball. The boy with the red hair has a virus infection, and he sneezed into his hands 
and got viruses all over the ball. Only you and I can see the viruses, but now all of the boys have viruses on their hands, and if they touch their face or mouth or nose before washing their hands, they may get infected. And here's a girl who sneezed into her hands, and now she is getting viruses all over this computer. If someone else uses this computer, they may get infected. But there are things you can do to keep from infecting others. If you have to sneeze or cough, do it into your elbow or into a tissue, not onto your hands. And wash your hands often with soap and water. It washes away the viruses and other germs. Washing your hands with soap and water is best, but if you can't do that, rub your hands with two or three drops of hand sanitizer. It will kill the viruses. Why are some people wearing masks? Wearing a mask helps block the virus. So if you have an infection, you can't give it to others. And if you aren't infected, you won't breathe the virus in if an infected person sneezes or coughs. One sick person can make a lot of other people sick because they pass it along from person to person. This is terrible. How can we stop it? Wait, I have an idea. If all the sick people stay home and everyone sneezes or coughs into their elbow and everyone washes their hands or uses hand sanitizer and you stay away from sick people, then the disease can't spread to so many people. The wizard smiles. Ah, now you have knowledge. You know how to protect yourself and your family and your friends. Now, if you could just help spread that knowledge to everyone, you could prevent a lot of people from getting sick. You don't have to be a wizard to give this knowledge to others. The wizard raises his staff and shouts, Regrese! Sarah feels a sudden jolt and she shouts, Oh! All of a sudden, she is awake in her bed, and she is relieved to find that she is back to normal size. The wizard is no longer with her. Her bedroom door opens, and her mother comes in. I guess I was having a dream. Sarah tells her mother about the strange dream that she had. I think much of your dream came from the talk that we had before you went to sleep. Your dream was a pretty accurate picture of what is actually going on with the coronavirus epidemic. The antibodies you saw in your dream looked like they were doing something magical. And I guess in a way, what they do is magical, but they are very real. Yes, it's just too bad that it takes people days to start making antibodies. I wish there was a way to have the antibodies already in your body before you get infected. That way, they could kill any viruses before it was able to cause an infection. Well, there is a way that can happen. When you get a vaccination against other virus diseases like measles, you're getting some pieces of a dead virus. The vaccination can't give you the disease, but it shows your defenses what the virus looks like, so it can start making antibodies and training the defense cells to stand guard and destroy any viruses that you are exposed to. Scientists are very busy developing a new vaccine to kill the coronavirus. When it is ready, it will be like magic.